Hello everyone. It's Madison. And Maddie with Spectrum Art, hello. right? Say hello. Hello. Happy New Year, right? Happy New Year. It is 2019 and we are coming to um, share a promise video. We had um, shared with, um, with you guys this file folder pocket flip album a few weeks ago. And oh, that glare is pretty bright today. Let's see if that helps. That might. Um, and uh, several of you had requested for us to do uh, a demo on how we actually got the base uh, of this done. So that's what we wanted to do today. If you're new to the channel, again, happy 2019 if you're just watching this. Um, and welcome. Uh, in case you're not familiar with our channel, please read the description box below. But uh, in a nutshell, we started this channel so that my daughter Madison and I uh, could craft together and share with you uh, our projects and uh, to remind everyone that everyone is an artist, uh, regardless of your level of expertise, uh, your age, right, or even your disabilities. Right, Madison? Yeah. Um, for those who are experts, of course, uh, we hope that you enjoy uh, seeing what we, we do and then, of course, take it to the next level. Uh, put your own spin on it. And of course, for those um, who are beginners, uh, feel free to follow along. We try to make things pretty simple um, to follow along on our channel. Uh, nothing fancy, no major supplies of any sort. Uh, but anywho, let's get right into this file folder uh, pocket flip album journal thing. Um, it is very, very simple. Um, very few uh, things that we actually utilize to make this. Um, I will link the original video below so you can actually see um this in its entirety i'm not going to go through it all but um you know basically it's just a really neat way of creating a lot of different pockets um but again i'll link that video below and you guys can take a look at that and also get a list of some of the materials on that video um we are going to be sharing how to do the base of that now bear with me because like i said i made that original one a few weeks back and a lot has happened um during the holidays so um you know not don't remember exactly but we're gonna do it together so the good news is that we will find out if i make any mistakes together and we will um you know figure out how to get this done so the first thing you're going to need is a file folder um, and this is just a plain old office file folder i think it's a Pendalex, Pendaflex, Pendaflex file folder. Yes. Um, and I think we got these from Staples online. I believe we bought a box of those. Um, but that's all that you're going to be needing for the base. So the first thing I did was I went ahead and I cut these tabs. You could leave them on um, to get a nicer clean finish. In my opinion, um, it's best to cut them off. So let me bring my guillotine over and we will cut those off and again this is a very quick quick project i didn't do any official and you know super measurements or anything like that it's just a stress-free cute cute way of um of creating now i don't like that see so i'm gonna go even deeper and get rid of that i'm gonna actually look down here Oh, am I off camera? Probably. It's kind of hard to do this with this big thing. Um, and just kind of make sure that that is actually on the cutting line. Let me bring it back this way so I don't cut wrong. But I'm giving you an idea as to what it is that I am doing. Okay. And now that is off. Okay, so that little piece now is gone. And we have just a square. Okay, the next thing... I did let me put this away was I went ahead and folded yes this in half now when you do that you are going to get a little bit of a lip and that's okay because you can always trim that off later so um, these were oh, let's see and again they're all going to be different by the way so I shouldn't even bother giving you measurements because they're all going to be different mine is 11 and well almost 12 hang on let me see this is my 12 so it's almost 12 yeah 
so we're going to go ahead and mark this at the six and you won't be able to see any of these markings because you're going to cover oh wait i was measuring wrong that's not yeah it is 12. um you're not going to see any of these once you actually cover them up with paper okay now now that i've got my lines i'm going to go ahead and come in and align that i'm not going to press down until i have both sides and i feel comfortable that they at least line up down here and up here somewhat. You don't want to be like all crooked and then have, you know, this situation. So roughly, roughly looking at it like this. And then we're going to press down. Now, you could use a scoreboard. But again, I'm giving you very, um, oh, look at that. I just rubbed my nail polish right on there. Huh. And that's okay. Um, you can use your bone folder. You can use your scoreboard. I am just going to do this with very basic tools so that everybody and anyone can follow along. Um, so I'm using the back of my scissor. And again, see, that's what I was looking for to kind of make sure that this is kind of aligned. This bottom, it's not so much. You see that? There's a little tiny sliver, but we can cut that. So no biggie. Okay, once I did that, what did I do next? That's gonna create our pockets. Oh, I know. I chose, you could leave it this way and see how it's much taller than this one, but I chose to open mine up and create pockets. So I use the same cardboard to go ahead and fold in. Now, how deep you want these pockets, up to you. You can go thin, you can go thicker, no set measurements. Again, I'm just gonna eyeball it and it's not even gonna be the same anyway, so it doesn't matter. So I'm just gonna think that, hmm, that's probably a pretty good size pocket right there to hold, you know, some stuff kind of stable. Again, I'm just gonna look at my ends here at the edges and make sure that I'm not all crooked and going all crazy. And once I think I got it, I'm just gonna crease. And again, using the back of my scissors, very simple. I'm gonna go ahead and crease that. Okay. That's gonna give us two sets of pockets. One set this way, and then another set this way. I didn't necessarily do that on this one. What I did was I actually cut these off. I cut, and I only left these. See them right here? I left those, but I did not leave the ones here. So again, a total world of possibilities. Take them completely off, leave some on, uh, fold them this way, or maybe fold them this way. Hey, I never thought about it, but you know what? There's no set rule that you can't really open it that way. Oh, look at that, something else to experiment with. But for the sake of the video, we're gonna keep it simple. We're gonna do it this way, okay? So now, as you can see, I've got this situation going on. The next thing to do is to go ahead and cut the slits. So these right here, I went ahead and cut following the line from the crease. This way and I'm hoping this is not too hard to see on a white folder. And again, you could use any color folder you have. So manila, black, pink, anything you wanna use um, is perfectly fine, is great for recycling. So now I've got these flaps, right? And I've got this right here. You could cut the base here. I did cut it on that other one just for looks. You could leave it as a hole and just glue it down when you make your pockets, right? Um, get a piece of paper. When you, do them, when you do your pockets this way, it doesn't matter if this is glued. I like aesthetically the way that it looks cut um, a little bit better, so I'm gonna go ahead and snip them here. Plus, I think it helps the paper to crease a little bit better um, when it actually comes to folding. Oh, and look at that, I cut that one kind of crooked. And again, not a big deal because one of the things that we're actually gonna have to do, honestly, oh, it's gonna be to trim these. So let's skip this for now. Let's go back up here. These are gonna get too, see how they're already starting to resist? You have got to trim these down, okay? So whether it's an eighth of an inch or whether you wanna use um, some kind of a guide or, but I don't 
do any of that. I just kind of eyeball it and cut a little sliver this way. And you'll see how it won't resist as much anymore, okay? We're gonna do the same thing on this side, on this side, and on this side. So let's go ahead and get those all done so you can see. I'm gonna flip it this way so I can cut a little bit easier. If you are wanting to be very precise, you could use your, you know, your cutter, you could use a ruler, doesn't have to be. You can always eyeball it. And remember, it's gonna get covered with paper anyway. So doesn't have to be super, super perfect. Okay. So we're gonna cut all four of those. And now you see that there is a gap. See that between these two? Here, let me do it this way. See the gap? Where this one, I just cut one side, now I need to cut this other side and create a bigger gap. That's what's gonna help our paper or our folder fold pretty easily. Okay. And again, I'm kind of doing this quickly and crudely just so that you guys can get an idea. All right, so once these are glued down, see how these are gonna fold now? See, they're not resisting as much, they're not sticking, and you can tweak it. As you are going through, if you find that there's something that's bending, see how this bottom one, oh, because it's not glued down, but let's say that was this top one, and you see the resistance, you just go right in with your scissor and snip that up, okay? All right, and that is basically the folder itself, the actual base. Now it's a matter of um, deciding what it is that you wanna do with it. The next thing that I did on mine was, because it's so much easier when it is in this condition, I went ahead and actually distressed all the edges. So I don't even know where my ink is. Madison, did you use the ink, honey? No. Well, any color ink, it doesn't matter. Okay. You guys get the idea? I love pink. All right, go ahead. Thank you. Okay, so this is what? Brush corduroy. So it's much easier to be able to, to distress while it's like this, see how I can actually grab this end, you know, flip it around, then do this side, and so on and so on. So, and even these edges right here, you know, for the little pockets. So it's much easier to do this before you glue it all down and allow it to dry, of course. Okay, after distressing the edges, you'll need to decide on the paper line that you're gonna be using, of course. Now, how many sheets you're going to need is going to depend mostly on what it is that you wanna do with this. Um, you'll need, of course, to cover all of these, right? Areas right here. You'll need to cover this, 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 right? You need to cover the whole back as well. Um, for the front, if you noticed, I grabbed, some, I grabbed a piece of paper and cut it in half, right? The back is just a pretty straight page and so are the ones on the inside. So you wanna pick stuff that coordinates well, not only when you open it this way, but also let's say that you wanted to leave these and open this, you still want this to kind of match. Um, or if you're gonna flip them up this way and bring this one down, you know, you still want it to coordinate. So, so just keep that in mind when you're picking your papers, of course, but the front is probably gonna be the only one that's a little tricky, not very tricky, but somewhat tricky. The other thing is after you're done picking your paper line and you say, okay, this is, you know, the paper that I wanna use. And again, this is why the six by sixes are outstanding for these, because this is the ideal size for a six by six pad. So it's a great way to use those. Um, is going to be to think about your closure because if you're going to be adding a ribbon sure i mean this could have been on top but if you want it a little bit neater and more hidden like this one you have to decide on that before you glue down your paper right i'm going to show you one that we started um and didn't get a chance to finish this one is more of a um, traveler's one it says make the rest of your life the best of your life and uh well i was gluing down the paper I had it clipped let me unclip it and I'm gonna come back when we finish this and I'll do a, a video and show you it fully finished but I wanted to share with you the fact that this closure is gonna be a little different this has got like little doorknobs which I'm gonna go ahead and do a string to, to tie them down um, 
but you notice that in order to do that, I had to make that decision before I glued this down because otherwise this is a brad. This brad would have actually shown here. So I had to decide on the closure prior to, you know, deciding as to where I wanted to take this. So I'll show you guys this. I mean, I have, um, this was actually a um, thin paper line. So I am reinforcing it. And here you see it. It is a little bit more work, you know, have to reinforce it. Um, but I'll come back and, and, and show you and share with you guys that one. Um, when it is all done but I wanted to show you that the closure you kind of have to decide as well as the paper in the front as to what it is you want to do okay so I would definitely recommend that once you are done with your base you go ahead and think about your closure you distress the edges and you go ahead and um, pick your paper line and then make sure that it all kind of mix and matches for this one we chose these two because they coordinate pretty well so it's got a lot of those pinks, teals, purples, and then, um, oh, again, remember, if you're going to be using the thinner paper line, you're going to need to reinforce it, and then we're going to be using this one, which has got the same teals, mints, pinks, some gold shimmer in there, purples, so these two, I think, are going to match very nicely to be utilized in here, and again, I can't tell you how many pages because it's all going to depend on whether you're going to do these pockets like this if you're going to snip these if you're going to do if you notice this one does not have a back this one does have a tuck spot so i have made provisions for a cart to go in there so this would be an additional piece of paper where this one did not need it so again it's going to depend on how many pockets how many belly bands and all that stuff you want to go ahead and and utilize and that's where your creativity is going to come into play because you get to decide once you've got the space where do you want to take it next you know how how much stuff do you want to put in here uh how many you know maybe you don't want to do these as a pocket maybe you want to do them as corner tucks i mean possibilities are endless and remember this one had these additional flip outs too remember where we and i'll and i'll link it below but it's got these flip outs. This one does not have those flip outs. There are no flip outs. Could it be added? Sure, it could be added at any time, um, but we just didn't do that. So endless possibilities um, to go ahead and play with your paper lines and you know create something awesome. So that is where I am going to go ahead and pause the video for a, a little bit I'm going to go ahead and go in and cut my paper to fit my um, folders. I recommend that you go ahead and leave a nice line. The more you do not leave this line here, this border, this edge, the more the paper is going to resist when it actually folds. So do leave yourself, actually even some of these were a little too tight, um, especially this one. I made it too, too close. I recommend that you leave a nice clean edge to allow that paper to not have a lot of bulk so it can actually fold. So without further ado, I'm gonna go ahead and um, we're gonna pause here and then Madison and I are gonna get to um, work on actually cutting up our pieces and then we will come back and share with you guys this finished um, project and um, like I said, link below um, the other ones that I have promised, okay? So we will see you guys very soon. Okay, bye. And here we are. We have gone through and used our um, paper pads and completed the book. So um, this one, we actually did a little bit of a different closure. Remember, we had talked about the possibility of using um, a band instead of um, the different closures. And I'll, you know, this one was the ribbon one, right? And then this one was the, um, the brads. So this one, we went ahead and used a band. And it's really, really cute. Mm -hmm, correct. And simply by removing it this way, we can open up our book. So let's take a look at what we came up with. So strong is the new pretty. And I'll just start unloading this as we go. And the back says there's power in being kind. Now again, on this one, we had not made a pocket in the back. And this one we did. And this one we did a tab. And this one we didn't. I didn't want to cut out here because I didn't want to lose that flower. But still, there is one back here. And let me actually, it's still kind of tight because it's a new project. But we have that large tab in there okay so then we open up this way 
And you're gonna see some differences, yes, between um, all three of them. Because um, I kind of went back and forth to make sure that I gave you guys um, some more ideas as to what sorts of things you could actually make with this one. This one here has these journaling cards, uh, three different sizes, and it opens up to reveal another large double-sided tab. Mm -hmm, it is very pretty. It also has two sides. Oh, we went ahead and used the paper line, the little um, ephemera that came with it to create these. Uh, this is the Polaroid and then some little tabs to be able to, you know, to write names or dates or, um, you know, to give that specific pocket uh, a theme. Uh, whether it's shopping lists or a specific day, maybe 1, 19, 19, whatever. Um, and then uh, it has two of these on either side okay double sided again and then on these we went ahead and created coordinating um, journal text now the cool thing about these is when I punched them out I saved them because we had reinforced them and they were pretty thick so I saved them which actually really makes a nice way to pull out plus it keeps it kind of decorated as well it adds an additional uh, color on there so then you've got those two as well. Uh, then we went ahead and flipped up this way. And we've got two more of those journaling tags and a really cute butterfly. And they've all been distressed around the edges. This paper line's so pretty, isn't that gorgeous? And then two more of the tabs. So, I mean, you can see just, I'm pulling them out so you can see how much actually, uh, you know, journaling and picture mounts you actually have or lists or writing opportunities for poems and ideas and passages um, or quotes you have because there's quite a few that'll fit in here. Then we flip up that top and we've got another big journaling card there on the back. We've got one here, one here, and these are nice and uh, on the back, I reinforced them with white paper to coordinate with the white folder uh, to allow for either, you know, again, a lot of writing, because um, it's kind of hard to write on some of these, they're kind of dark, but the back obviously gives you ample room to do that. So there's three more. Here's another little cute one, says love. And oh, on this one, if you, I forgot to mention, I created a double pocket. So you've got one in the front, right? And one in the back. So you've got one, two, right? One, two, and then three. So that's a double pocket. And on here, which I hadn't done in the other ones, remember one, the, the pink one was a fold out this way, right? And then the other one I had just left blank. So there was plenty of room and I actually did paper clips. Um, well, I'll show this one in the next video so I don't confuse you guys, but you'll see that there's differences, um, you know, in, in how I utilize each of these, uh, again, to provide even more ideas. So on um, this one here is a single large pocket. We've got three nice big journaling cards and it's actually large and kind of two mediums. Then we've got the large one here. I did not cut out the punch here because I did not want to mess with that heart because look how beautiful that is. This is beautiful and it's a gorgeous heart, but it's got a really pretty journaling card there. And that's another big one. And then we've got our two side ones. And it's great how all of these coordinate so well. And then we've got our pull up ones again. And again, see the cutouts that I use from here, I used on here. So they didn't go to waste and they actually help reinforce because you don't want to keep weakening that same area you're pulling from. And so there we go. So this is what our book will look like without any of the inserts. We've got, let me move these over and then it opens this way, right? Opens this way and this way and this way. And there you go. So we've got one, two, three, and then four different areas to go ahead and store stuff with our little band here, which is very, very cute, very simple though. Um, and then we've got all of these that actually go in there. So let's take a look and see just how many pieces we've got. I mean, big ones, right? 
I think there's another big one here. Hang on, let me move this over. Is that another big one? Yep, there's another big one. And then we've got our medium ones. Then we've got our side pocket ones. Oh, there's another medium one. So look at all the stuff and then some smaller ones and then, you know, the six pull tabs. So look at all the writing and pictures, mounds and opportunities that are in there all with one file folder. So, and again, you can create as many pockets as you like. You can create as many journaling cards or mounts as you like. Um, totally up to you. You don't even have to, you know, create these inserts. You can just leave them, you know, as one solid piece, just as a background, and then just use the pockets, you know. And again, you can do side pockets. You can do flip outs. You can do all kinds of stuff. Oh, but what else you can use? What's that? You can also do the, this, this way too. Yeah, that's yeah, yeah, that's what I was saying. This way, diagonal, yeah, mm -hmm. the side, um, the corner pockets, absolutely. So possibilities are endless, all with one simple file folder, some glue and scissors. Um, so I hope really you guys have enjoyed it, and we hope that you will try it. And again, remember, everyone can craft, right? Yep. All right. Have a blessed day. Bye. Bye, guys.